Hey guys, RC here, back with a new game today. Uh, this actually arose from uh, a comment on one of my other videos, and uh, so we're going to give it a shot. So this is Draft Day Sports College Basketball. Uh, brand new release, came out right around March Madness, so just a few weeks ago. Uh, they're on version 1.3, so there have been a couple of patches put out on it. And uh, I just downloaded the game last night and finished installing it this morning. So I have not even opened the game yet. So we'll kind of walk through this together. Uh, typically what I do with these games uh, is I do kind of a generic walkthrough. We kind of take a look at everything together, uh, evaluate everything, and then I'll get into some playing and we'll probably do some videos for that. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, I might uh, might do a career or a season uh, video at some point uh, as well. So uh, look for some more things coming from Draft Day Sports. Now this is, uh, uh, first off, I have to be very honest. Uh, this game was uh, actually gifted to me by uh, the developer, Gary Gorski, uh, to do a couple of video reviews for him. Uh, Gary knows that I'm going to be very honest, though, uh, but this is the first game that I've actually been given to review or, uh, or vi do videos for, so uh, thank you very much to Gary and Wolverine Studios for that. Um, I I've played a lot of games for, uh, of Gary's uh, over the years. Um, I actually used to be one of his alpha testers, uh, just to give full disclosure. Uh, then they went to the uh, beta testing and the beta trial testing. Uh, and then the alpha testers, we were phased out, uh, and they've gone in a, uh, away from uh, that. So I'm not affiliated with the company anymore, um, but uh, definitely uh, appreciate Gary's work. He's put out uh, golf games, uh, Total Pro Golf. Uh, he brought on uh, Brooks, who uh, did the Draft Day Sports College Football and Pro Football uh, so Draft Day Sports is now kind of their banner for their sporting line. Uh, they've got golf. They've got uh, they've got several sites, but uh, check them out at you know Wolverine Studios. I'll put a link to their website in the uh, video description below. Uh, so anyway, just wanted a little bit of full disclosure to you guys on uh, you know where this was coming from. But again, this this uh, the idea of even doing this game cropped up from a comment from one of you uh, on one of my other videos that uh, they'd like to see uh, a video series uh, for this particular game. So uh, I reached out to Gary and uh, Gary got back with me quickly and was uh, nice enough to uh, to give me a copy of the game to, uh, to, to test drive. So uh, let's take a look at it. Again, this is the first time I'm opening the game, so I'm right there with many of you maybe. So uh, this is uh, very typical of uh, the artwork and the, and the layout of uh, of where Wolverine has gone in recent years. You know, the, the the graphics and the design are very cutting edge, I think. Uh, definitely uh, have a very good appeal. Um, sometimes it takes a little getting used to, especially if you're used to something else. But, um, but again, I, you know, they've put a lot of thought into uh, how it looks. And, of course, you can see the background uh, graphics of the uh, tournament bracket that uh, we all know so well. And uh, mine got busted again this year. But I still won my family uh, bracket pool, so that was nice. Uh, so here we are. We have the main menu. Uh, we can create a new association load a, an association, play an exhibition game, make up a tournament, and update multiplayer. So this does have a multiplayer function. Now, I will not be touching on that just because I don't know anything about how it works in this particular game. So I can't really touch on that. Uh, I do know that the, uh, you know, I am in some online, one online basketball league. We do use a different game. Uh, my understanding is they did look at this and decided not to update to it. Um, but it is a historical throwback league. We're currently, I think, in 1965. So I don't know if there were some things with that uh, in the, the league editing that we couldn't do. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so I will not be touching on the multiplayer. But we'll get into the, uh, you know, the, the solo play here uh, and, and see what we've got. So again, version 1.3 is evidently the current version as I just downloaded this last night. So uh, there are some patches available if you have the game from an earlier period of time. 
Uh, and this is only available through, uh, from my understanding, through their uh, website. But I tell you what, we can look real quick. I know he does have... Okay, they have... Uh, Alright, so they've got the new, the pro basketball game is on here. Uh, it's a little older, but it's still, rel that's their newest pro basketball release. Uh, pro Basketball 4, which is the precursor to 2017, I think. And then Draft Day Sports College Basketball 3, which is the precursor to the one that we're testing. So they do have a couple of their older versions and their current pro basketball version uh, on Steam. Uh, this one is not on Steam as of right now. Uh, so maybe down the road, but right now you can get it on direct download from the website. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new association. And again, this is very familiar for anybody that's played Wolverine uh, games. Uh, single player, multiplayer, you can put in your commissioner password. Uh, you're only going to play multiplayer if you're going to play with multiple people. You'll need a server to set up uh, to put the file for hosting and things of that nature. I do know that. Um, but we're going to do single player. Uh, we want to do an auto save. So let's do, uh, we're just going to call the file test league. Uh, and association name will be uh, the NCAA test. Uh, I always like to start sometime previously, but um, yeah, let's go with um, let's go with 1998 just for giggles. You can change the logo if you've got something else uh, on your computer that you would like to do. Uh, we're going to change this to the NCAA, the NIT. And I wish there was a way to turn these off. Um, I, you know, I know nobody I know pays attention to the third and fourth tournaments unless their alma mater makes it, uh, which is the only reason I know that the third level tier is called the CIT and the Who Cares tournament. <laughs> we'll do that. Um, now we can customize the association, so let's take a look at that. Standard mode or you can allow conference movement. Uh, so you, more traditional where everybody will, you know, Duke will always be in the ACC, uh, or Duke might move to the Sun Belt one day. Probably not. Uh, promotion and relegation. That's actually something relatively new that, that uh, games have been coming out with. Um, I can see the appeal for it. I'm a big, big soccer or football fan uh, from uh, the Premier League and, and you know European soccer. Um, not enough that I follow all the players, but I, I love the game. Played it growing up. Uh, uh, I've actually met Pele, uh, so uh, when I was much younger. But uh, that would be interesting. I think uh, uh, maybe a, 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 a video series where you know a game. You know, maybe once or twice where you're playing, that would be neat. But we're going to stay with standard mode. We're not going to allow conference movement. So if you have a custom roster file, you could import that here. Ratings are either 1 to 10 or 1 to 100. So we're going to go with basic 1 to 10. Uh, limited ratings. Not sure what that does exactly, but what I would guess it does is it turns off the 1 to 10 in fact, if we click it there, no, nope, it doesn't turn it off, but it will it will probably hide some uh, some ratings um, and make it more. Uh, if you pl if you played out of the park baseball, for example, they have a stats only option where the actual ratings are turned off, and you have to go more on stats. Uh, so maybe something along those lines. Uh, you can set the injury percentage. 100% is normal, so you could turn that up or down. Um, I'm going to turn off illegal recruiting. Um, it's it's neat, but at the same time, you know, I never use the illegal inducements. And I like throwback, so I'm going to prevent underclassmen from declaring. Uh, that way, there's no one and dones. Uh, I think that has really hurt college basketball personally. 
Uh, I don't begrudge them going out and getting a job, you know, the job in the NBA, but, you know, I think it's hurt college basketball. Um, and I think there's some different things they could do, but this is not a video about that. Uh, recruiting difficulty, we're going to keep it at uh, normal for right now, but it, you can see it does have four levels all the way up to brutal, so that would make recruiting much more difficult. Uh, can you be fired? Well, we're going to say yes, and job pressure level, uh, we're going to keep as normal. All right, so let's go to Customize Teams. Now, I don't know. Typically, at some point, they have a, uh, you know, somebody will do a mod for, well, in fact, you know, we, we you know, since this is a exploration video, let's, uh, let's go take a look at... Uh, Let's go take a look at Wolverine's page. All right, so here's the page. WolverineStudios.com is going to get you to their main page. Board Index will get you to their forums where you can register and everything. Um, college Basketball Mods. All right, so they do have a real-world mod. Looks like this one's got uh, quite a few looks. They also have images for logos and courts. Um, so most of these are pretty easy to do. Uh, we do have one injury. Looks like he's fixed it. All right. So yeah, basically what this will do is it will change your tournament names to the correct names. It'll change the conference names. Uh, it will give you uh, the real team names. So that will definitely be something that I will be doing uh, at some point before I actually do a full video series just because I feel that's something you have to have. And of course, you have to be licensed to, uh, to use those names as the developer. So Gary can't put those into the game directly, but there's certainly nothing that stops a third party from doing that independently that he has no control over. So... Uh, I will be doing that and uh, I will be playing with that file at some point. So you can see up here we have the association progress. So we've got three bars lit up with four unlit, if you can see that in the background here. Uh, so that's just in our development stage. So it kind of walks you through the process. Uh, this is where you would change conference logos if you wanted to create a fictional type league, setting up the, uh, you know, the divisions and whatnot. Um, jerseys, colors, I mean, you can, you can do all that in here. So there's a lot of customization that you can do, which is really good. I find the more customization that's allowed um, really helps because there's some creative people out there, and, and they like to really delve into these games. Uh, but, but I'm going to go with the default stuff there. I just kind of wanted to walk through the screens. We're going to go in and create a coach, and we're going to create that coach, and it's going to be me. Uh, I'm going to be, eh, 35 is a good age. Dream job would be Michigan. And uh, if you didn't know, uh, as I said, Wolverine Studios is the developer. Gary is a University of Michigan alum. Uh, I was not fortunate enough to go to Michigan. I'm very proud of my alma mater, which is Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, had a different name when I went there, though. But uh, Michigan is my dream college. Uh, I am a huge, passionate fan. I would put my passion up against any alum in the country. And uh, I think my wife would agree. Uh, I don't speak for days sometimes when they lose, especially at football. Uh, but anyway, that's getting off the beaten path. You can put a password in. Uh, this is going to mainly be for uh, multiplayer. You know, when you're the only one playing it, there's really no reason. And this is where you kind of start to delve into setting your coach up. So we've got uh, ambition. What's your ambition to move to a bigger school? To you know, So I'm going to say it's high. Uh, I do want to move up. Because I'm going to start at a lower end school in all likelihood. Now for this one we may not, but for a career I certainly would. 
Academics, I'm going to say average. I mean, yes, they're important, but at the end of the day, as a coach, you're paid to win games. Grades are going to come second to you. Discipline, I'm going to say low. I'm going to be kind of like Calipari. I'm going to be a little hands-off. Integrity, I have. I think I have pretty high integrity. And temper, do you want to be Bobby Knight? Do you want to be Coach K? <laughs> or do you want to be somewhere in the middle? I'm going to say a six, just a little on edge. Uh, and then your philosophies. This is where you dial up uh, your your coach's philosophy. So very fast, very slow, or very fast. Well, I like a very fast offensive pace. I like my offense to crash the boards. Um, I like, this looks like it's a little on the youth side. Um, I don't know how this is actually going to play. Let's see. Set your player preference. All right. See, that that looks, just to me, just to me, that looks a little out of place in the college game because you, you, have, you always have recruiting and turnover. So, I, you know, you can't really control who's on your team. In the pros, you could trade away that seven- or eight-year vet and get a second-year pro. Uh, and be more youthful oriented, but in in co college you're recruiting players, so you're always going to have an influx and a mix. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why you would choose to play uh, the the freshman if the senior is better, even if you like youth per se. So that looks a little out of place in the college game, but but you know, so I'm going to leave it middle because honestly, I don't know what that's going to do for me. Um, hope maybe somebody from Wolverine will see this and they can answer that question. What exactly in this game, college basketball, does this do for us? It's not. It shouldn't affect the, the recruits that are interested in us, right? Because they're all going to be high school seniors or JUCO players. I guess that could be it. Maybe you lean more towards JUCOs, and uh, you know they're coming in as juniors and upperclassmen. And uh, you know Kansas State made a career out of that uh, in football, right? So maybe that's what that has to do with now that I think about it. Not, sometimes I have to think things through, but that's the only thing I can really grasp right now. Um, player rotation. Well, I like a pretty deep bench. It doesn't have to be huge, but we're going to give it a couple of ticks. And I guess that will be how much your bench plays. Um, you know, that's your starting five with no bench. And basically the only time anybody else will come in is if they're tired. You know, you'd like to have two, maybe three guys on your 11-man roster, uh, assuming it's an 11-man roster, uh, that can come in and play and contribute. Uh, full court defense, uh, I'm going to say just a tick below average. Zone, it's hard to set that because, you know, a, a school like Syracuse runs the zone pretty religiously. Um in real life, um, most teams run a man-to-man -man with a little bit of zone mixed in. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to leave that right in the middle. Um, defensive intensity, uh, tenacious. When I, when I think of defensive intensity in college basketball, the first person, I, the first player I think of is Stacy Augman from UNLV back in the early 90s. Um, you know, he was, he was a crushing defender um, and I do like that but remember typically in real life at least the more pressure you exert on defense the less uh, stamina and and whatnot that you have for the offensive end of the court but I'm gonna keep that at a, at a normal and I'm gonna tick up defensive boards just a little bit so I want to crash the boards uh, defense, I think, is important because you don't want to give them second chance shots. And offense, you want to crash the boards because you want second chance shots. Now, the problem is when you crash the boards, if you miss the rebound, you've got usually open outlets and leads to fast break points. So you have to kind of think about that when you're doing that. All right. Choose coaches' skills or random skills. Well, we're going to go in and look at coaches' skills. All right, so you can be a rookie, amateur, average, pro, veteran, elite, and custom. 
and each one of those is going to have it's basically a difficulty level if you haven't you know if you've played any other games where they have easy normal and hard mode that's kind of what this is so you're gonna have so many points well here's you know your model is kind of your current your development is you know so if you want to become a, a coach at say a Kentucky North Carolina you're probably going to want to be an elite level coach because they're the only guys that are going to really get that job um, but this gives your your current level and your potential level so you can see I hit elite it jumps me up to 85 so that's the max that I could ever have and if I'm coming in right now I'm gonna say that I've already paid my dues I may be a rookie but I've probably already been an assistant coach and gone through a little bit of learning and I've probably become an average coach now we can dial that back a little bit and typically what happens and I'm just guessing but because they have this coaches point system at certain certain years you if you achieve certain thresholds winning tournament you know winning a first round game whatever um, you will actually get a basically a bonus and you'll be given you know five points or ten points that you can add into your current skills so even though I'm starting off at a 40 I'll be able to eventually up that as high as 85 assuming that you're successful now that's one way to do it the other way is is that as you play it just you know as you gain experience by by coaching in certain you know so many years uh, you're going to get um, you're just going to get automatic ability bumps. I don't know how they do it, but that's that's the two ways that I have seen. So basically, you choose where you want to start, and you can also do that as custom as well. All right. So let's say we want to do custom uh, offensive. Let's say I want to be an offensive-minded coach to start. Uh, I've slacked off on my defense a little bit. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, rec scouting. Uh, recruiting I'm pretty good at, but you know, I was not the main recruiter. And player development, uh, you know, we still want to be a little low on that, so I'm going to say 45. So that's me. I focused on scouting as, as an assistant. I was an offensive minded coach, and I did go out and recruit, so I've got some abilities there. Um, because I'm offensive, I'm going to say that we can get up pretty high there. Uh, defense, because I'm behind, I'm going to say I'm going to be lagging there a little bit. So we're going to go to a max of 85. Scouting, because I'm already so high, I think uh, we'll go to a 92. Player development, I don't think you can ever get all your players coached up, as they say. So we're going to say a 90. And then recruiting... I'm a pretty good people person, so we're going to say probably a 94. So that's going to be my coach. We're, so that's using customs, and then you can change it to where you want to be. Now, I have uh, 40 points left because basically you could go up um, 10, 20, 30, 40. So none of those would be out of the realm of possibility. So. Oh, okay, never mind. So it's 40 over here to get everything to 100. Okay, so you don't have to use all the points. I think that's going to be good. That's going to be a good spot to start at because, if you know, it's pretty similar to, you know, when we were looking at the amateur, between amateur and average. So I think that's a good start. So custom's an interesting way to go where you can kind of choose you know pick and choose you know maybe you're a coaching prodigy and you could coach out of the cradle so you're gonna be a hundred a hundred across the board um, you know and you'll just dominate uh, that's one way to play uh, and that's what's great about the abilities to split this up is you can choose and you don't have to use all these points so now we're going to select our school so you can sort by prestige top down uh, naturally, I am not going to get a top job. Uh, you can actually start unemployed and then wait for job offers to come in. 
my biggest concern with that because I've done it and several games out there allow this option is I've gone two three four seasons without getting uh, a job offer um, you know so uh, that's no fun so you know I always kind of try to take a job um, and kind of what's good about this is it is each one of these schools is a, I mean, Central Arkansas, I mean, that's obviously a real school. Seattle is a real school. Southeast Houston is probably Houston Baptist, I would think, um, because it's regional Houston, I would think, and, and a six prestige. So that wouldn't be Houston or Rice. That's got to be Houston Baptist. Um Tell you what, now, well, let's see, and then you have facilities and academics, because academics weren't that important. Let's go ahead and go with North D.C. Lamar's right down the road from me, not, you know, but they're a one star out of the D.C. area, 13 prestige. D.C. is supposed to have pretty solid recruiting, uh, just below average facilities. They don't care about academics, so that's fine. Uh, now, where that will probably come into play is with recruits that are interested in academics. So, finish in the top three of the conference, win 10 or more games, and they are offering me a two-year deal at 100000 a year. So, I'll accept that job. So, now you can see we've gotten the update that it's uh, completed. Uh, we can add new coaches. So, you can have multiple coaches here um, in multiplayer. You know, I seem to recall in one of his earlier versions, I was able to have, I was able to create a second or third coach, have them hired as assistants to be getting some experience. And then, you know, and I used that for some of the dynasties that I did. I had a, I had one dynasty that I did for one of Gary's earlier college games that was like over a hundred seasons uh, a long time ago. Um, that, that is probably floating around somewhere on the internet but anyway uh, so we're gonna click advance it's gonna create our association you can see the work bar here so again I just kinda wanted to go through the initial setup I had not you know actually seen this before but uh, that is basically setting up the game setting up your coach choosing a job uh, so that should get you into the game so hopefully that helps uh, I will put the links to the game and to the website uh, and to the forums in the description below. Uh, check out the game. There is a demo. You can play the demo. And then, you know, after the demo's done, I don't, it's uh, one season or whatever, um, then you, you can uh, purchase the game. They use e-license to uh, give you a code uh, after you buy it. Uh, works very well. Uh, so let's see. Multiplayer leagues need a password. Um, solo player leagues, you can go to the commissioner's office, and I, which I guess allows you to change some things. So we don't need a password. We're going to continue. And here we are into the game. All right, so I tell you what. All I wanted to do in this first video was kind of the initial walkthrough, the setup, and now we're going to start do We're going to do another video uh, that will kind of go from this point moving forward and we'll try to get into a little bit of looking at the game uh, and things of that nature. What I will probably try to do is uh, save this and we will call this Test League and yes we will replace that. Um, I will try to download that mod and see if I can get that working. So when I come back we should see Duke and Michigan and Syracuse 1, 2, 3. Um, just a little bit of bias there, Gary. Because <laughs> we know Michigan's not number two in the country. Uh, not typically. We would like them to be, but uh, not typically. All right, guys. Well, hopefully this has helped you out. Thanks for checking out the video. Uh, I will be doing some additional videos for the game uh, moving forward. As I said, we'll get the, uh, the, the, the real world mod added in here. And then we will come back and, uh, and pick up at this point. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time. Take care.